Designers often use typography to emote or communicate beyond the words of the headline or the paragraph. Until recently, their typographic choices were severely limited by the fact that you couldn't reliably choose fonts that would work equally well in everybody's browser or device. Now, there were ways to install decorative fonts on the end user's computer. However, it wasn't a reliable process and certainly not supported by all web browsers. Additionally, there was the added challenge of licensing a font correctly for use on the web. Now in CSS level 3, the font face attribute along with a healthy ecosystem of font publishers creating fonts for use strictly for the web allows for a much greater choice of fonts for websites. Now obviously we're drifting here into designer territory but I want to look at how you can employ the font face purely from a technical perspective. In most cases, whenever you license a font face style font created specifically for use on the web, they'll provide you some sample code that you can copy paste and then modify to suit your purposes. And that's exactly the technique that I want to demonstrate for this lesson. So what I want to do is start looking, uh, start by looking at a company uh, called Font Squirrel. They provide a wide selection of fonts that can be used for free, even for commercial purposes. And you see they even kind of uh, note that here, only the best commercial use free fonts. Now even so, you still want to be aware of the licensing terms uh, and abide by the agreement that they set forth. Uh, if Also, if none of the free ones that are available uh, suit your needs, then there are clearly dozens of publishers that would love to sell you a, uh, a, um, a non-free <laughs> font, and there are plenty of them out there. Okay, so let's take a look at what it would take to include a decorative font on a fictitious website that we're working on. Uh, to get started in this example, I have a folder called Lesson 17. Uh, you should be able to download the zip file containing this folder from wherever you're currently watching this video or from uh, wherever you originally downloaded this video. There is a before folder and we're going to want to copy the two files and paste them in the work folder where we'll do the majority of our work. If we open up Lesson 17, you can see that it's simply a, uh, a, a very simple web page. The paragraph has been supported uh, has been styled using the styles.css style sheet. I simply used a font uh, font family setting Arial, Helvetica, Sans Serif uh, to the paragraph. And now what we want to do is apply a decorative font to the title to the H1 of this web page. All right. So to do that, actually, let's start back over here on the font squirrel. Okay. And what I want to do is take a look at the popular fonts. And I love this good dog font. I think it's kind of uh, a neat hand-drawn font. I'm going to go ahead and click View to review all of the of the indi individual glyphs that are a part of this font, and I think they're just really well done. So what I want to do is click on the Font Face Kit over here on the right of this little this little bar. I could review the license and look at the character map, but I'm I'm ready to go. So I'm going to click on Font Face Kit, and you can see that we can choose a subset of the uh, font face kit specifically for different font formats. What are the different font formats for? They give you a little cheat sheet here on the right hand side. Um, fonts that work in most browsers, those that work in um, an Internet Explorer, those that work uh, in other mobile devices and so on. I'm going to go ahead and allow it to choose the entire uh, plethora of fonts that are available and I'm going to click the download font face kit. I'll save it to my downloads folder. I want to view my downloads folder and I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually let me um, just open it up from here. All right, there we go. And I'm going to drag this onto my desktop, double click it. I can see the files inside of it. What I really need to do is extract those files out. So I'm going to right click and select extract all or use your favorite method of extracting zip files. I'll click extract and now we have a folder unzipped containing all of our information. If we click on demo, you can see it does indeed display the demo web page and that's exactly what we want to use as kind of a template for what we're trying to do with our own web page. So if I were to right click this and open with Notepad and I think that, you know, if you turn on Word Wrap, at least you can see it all, they've compressed everything so it's a little bit difficult uh, either way either reading it on one line or reading it um, 
uh, in this word wrapped uh, manner to kind of see what's going on here. But I can make out a couple of important features. First of all, there's a stylesheet.css that we're, we're gonna need to look at. Furthermore, there's this h1.font face where they're setting a font using a font family called Good Dog Regular, which I'm gonna assume was created in that style sheet. Furthermore, if we look at the um, if we look at their H1, it has a class of font face, so that's where this is applied. And then there is a P style one that also uses the Good Dog Regular, and you can see it's styled using this class equals style one. Okay, so I think at this point what we need to do is probably pull from a couple of different places. Let's go to the style sheet, open with Notepad. And here again, it's all on one line, not very helpful for our purposes. So what I'm gonna do is format this a little nice, a little more nicely. And every time there is a, a logical break, like a semicolon or a comma, I'm gonna go ahead and put my cursor right after it and then hit the enter key on the keyboard. And that will retain most of the styling for me, like so. Now it's comprehensible, I can read it and understand what's going on here, awesome. And what I see here is that it's creating a font family called Good Dog Regular. Uh, and it will associate that uh, the font face Good Dog Regular with the following actual font files the EOT file, the WOFF file, the TFF file, or TTF file, and the SVG file. All right. And uh, some additional styling as well. So what I'm gonna do is just copy this entire section, hit Control C on my keyboard, and then what I wanna do is go to my, uh, let's see, let's close everything down here, and go to my Lesson 17 folder. And in my Work folder, I'm gonna just paste, or actually I'm gonna go in the Styles, open that with Notepad, and then paste that font face right here in my Styles, all right? So this is only half the equation. Uh, what I need to do now is create a style that utilizes this new font family that was defined. And to do that, what I'll pr wind up doing is like a H1, and we'll call this H1 heading. And I'm gonna take a cue from uh, the example page that they provide in their demo. And let's turn word wrap back on so we can find it again here. And so in their h1 dot font face, this is how they define their font. I'm going to go ahead and just copy that onto my clipboard and then minimize it. And we're going to go back here and control V. All right. So here we're setting for h1 dot heading. So a heading class that I'll, I'll have to associate in my h1 here in just a moment. Uh, it will utilize that good dog regular font face. Let's go ahead and save that. I think we're done here, so we'll close that down. And I think we're done here, so we'll close. Well, I think I'll need to get back to that, actually. Um, now, the last thing that I need to do is shut that down. Shut that down. Let's go to our work folder, our lesson 17. And what I want to do is put class equals, what do we call that heading? All right. And then the final thing that I need to do is to make sure I copy uh, the fonts over. So I want to make sure to grab the, the EOT file, the SVG file, the true type font file, and the WOFF file. I'm going to copy those and put them here in my work directory. Now, obviously in a real website, I would want to put these in a subdirectory and kind of partition everything off. I wouldn't want to maintain a website where everything was mixed together like the way that I have it here. But for our simple purposes right now, this will do just fine. All right, so I think I have everything in place now. If I were to reopen Lesson 17, I get our beautiful heading, the new font face using that good dog font. Awesome. Okay, so um, I think one, a couple of caveats here. To keep in mind, first of all, you want to always be aware of the licensing terms for fonts. And if it says you have to keep um, a file in the same directory as your the actual fonts themselves, then make sure you do that. 
Make sure you read any of the legal uh, legalese and what the requirements are to properly license that free font or the commercial font. And then the second thing you need to be aware of is the size of the fonts. Uh, some of these are quite large. Take, for example, the SVG document. It's 57K. That's a very large, uh, a very large file. Uh, some of them are quite a bit smaller, which is great, but still, uh, most search engines now penalize web pages that take too long to load so you want to be aware of that when you're designing a website not to use too many of these external resources or it might hurt your uh, search engine optimization efforts okay uh, but at any rate and also I mean you know if somebody's dialing in and, and loading up your web page it might take forever for the for the page to actually render out because it's waiting for all these external resources all right that's from a usability perspective that's obviously a big deal as well Okay, so uh, at any rate, that's all that I have to say about font face. Hopefully you can have some fun with that, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.